Hey guys, how's it going? This is Morbid Mansion on Jemmy Master Animatronics, and today I've got a nice little unboxing here for you. Now it's been a it's been a short while, and by that I mean a few probably a few months now. I haven't actually looked since I uploaded on this channel, but I can assure you, I am very much alive. Just a very busy guy. But a little bit ago, I saw this pop up on eBay, and I just couldn't resist grabbing one for myself. Um, you know, we'll get into it as I open it, but as you can see. We've got a nice box here. We're gonna go right, we're just gonna, we're just, nobody wants to hear me talk. You just wanna see me open up a box. So screw it, we're just gonna open up the box. As carefully as possible. Oh, Jesus. Uh, got enough tape on the box. I don't know. Uh, he's done with the uh, usual method of one box is not big enough, so tape the another box to the opened part of the uh the first box actually this is there's like three boxes here oh my god okay almost through the top layer all right oh what a nightmare okay time we're in uh, all right uh, can you see that there that's right, we got a classic here. Specifically the Menards box, the Pumpkin Hollow. Actually, you can see a remnant of the Menards sticker on top. So let's get this junk out of the way. Uh, right there. Uh, there we go. There's the OG box. All right, so I got this guy off of eBay a couple days ago. Paid, uh, paid 130 plus shipping and taxes, which isn't really bad for this guy. Um, he does have a few issues, or he did. I don't know if he still does. We'll find out. Uh, but let's go through the box here. First things first. Ooh, I hit the camera. We got his head, and this is like my favorite Jimmy sculpt of all time. I love the uh, ghastly face, I guess you could call it, or the screaming face. This is just such a cool sculpt. It's so creepy. Um... And it always looks really, really good. You know, even at its worst, it still looks good. Um, now, I've seen the prototype for this thing before, and I know the head was painted a lot more detailed. But even the produced one doesn't look horrible by any means at all. And you can see it's uh, in this variation, this hard plastic, because on the ghastly doorman and on the ghastly groom, and I'm trying to think of other items, uh, most life sizes have a vinyl version, not a plastic version. But this one does because uh, it doesn't have any movement. And the reason why those other ones are vinyl is because their heads shake. So there, there's the head. We're just gonna we're just gonna put that down to the side and slowly make our way into the rest of this. Okay. Here is his shoulders. And this is sadly the worst piece of the bunch. These are known for the arm snapping off and for this piece down here. This is the connector that connects it to the rest of the body breaking off. And um, there's really not much you can do about it. It's just this really thin plastic. I'm not even in, I'm not even in camera. It's this really thin plastic they used. Um, but you can see there's his on and off sensor. There's some of the detailing on the hands. We'll get a better look at it once it's together. But yeah, you can see the previous owner super glued and baking soda the, uh, the knob here. And it, it seems to be holding up. It seems sturdy enough. But yeah, it's this black plastic that's used, and on top of it being the black plastic, it's very, very thin black plastic. So that's uh, probably why it's the way that it is. Okay, what else do we got? We got a couple poles, very simple poles for this guy. Neat, I guess. We've got, we've got a base, very even more simple than the usual ones. Oh, I bumped the camera again. No shoes. He doesn't have any. Never did. And I'm guessing there's got to be a waist piece in here. Oh, yeah, there it is. Oh, black plastic, too. This is pretty much almost identical looking to the ones that are on the regular pole-based characters, except it doesn't have a waist bracket. And uh, it doesn't have... These are usually kind of, like, ribbed so that the pole can slide in with some resistance. But I think this is one of the very early pole-based characters Jemmy did, so that's probably why it's... You know like this this was kind of like a test and it clearly failed because the later ones are nothing like this so take that original box put it to the side uh we'll clean up the set here a little bit we'll get them together 
and we'll see how that goes. All right, and just like that, he's all put together. Now, I don't have batteries in him yet, uh, so we're just going to take a detailed look at him. And I can tell from putting this guy together, uh, he is uh, very cheap on Jemmy's part. Um, <laughs> the arms are very thin. This almost feels like if it wasn't for the, you know, quality of the weathering on the shirt and the detail of the face, I would say that this is a modern Jemmy product. So it's not that everything from the classic era was really high quality and good because this is the head, the neck up is really good. The costume is pretty good. The hands are actually really nice, very thin, but they look good. But the construction of him leaves a lot to be desired. Um, it's very, very flimsy. And every piece of plastic used on this guy just feels monumentally cheap. As well as the arms as well. But they don't have to hold any weight or anything. So I don't have a problem with them using thin materials for that. But just everything else is very, very cheap. And of course, the exclusion of shoes. You know, my man, he ain't, he ain't got the J's. He ain't got nothing on. You know, he ain't rocking nothing. Um, but, uh, all in all, uh, it's not a bad look. Like the look, the idea behind this zombie is very, very, very good. It's a very, I think the design comes together really well. It's just the build quality and the quality of materials that kind of knocks this down a peg. I might look into building, uh, or taking an older, older, newer Jemmy pole based mech, you know, one of the ones like, uh, Coachman Skeleton has and try retrofitting him onto that. But as you can see, he's also very, very tall on this original mech. He stands taller than a lot of the life-size characters I have. He's actually about as tall as the Top Hat Skeleton Butler's hat. So he's like, uh, I want to take a guess and say he's probably like 6'1", uh, 6'2". Six, six, he's a little bit taller. A lot of these characters claim they're exactly six feet. They're not really. They're a little bit. They're close to it, at least. This guy is taller than six feet. I can assure you. He's very, very big. Um, but anyway, I've still got to slap batteries in him, and I got one other thing I want to show you here. And uh, we'll get into the uh, the actual demo session, because there isn't really much else to show off here. I mean, as you can see, his side profile is very, very thin. Uh, his arms, very, very thin. His legs, very, very, very thin. Uh, and his waist is non-existent. That's just the way that these are. So anyway, I'm going to throw some batteries in them. We'll get a little demo going here. I love the audio on this guy. And if you're a classic Jemmy guy, you're going to love it too. Because it's got a lot of the, it plays the best hits of the Jemmy classic era, if you will. It's like a good old uh, uh, New York classic Jemmy station. So we'll get to that here in a second uh, after I show you one thing here quick. So here's the thing I wanted to show you real quick. The uh, seller, I'm covering his name. Wrote, thank you, enjoy, and actually drew a pretty cool little photo of uh, the zombie's head, which is very, very cool, very, very nice. So I just wanted to show that off. I thought that was a little cute. That was pretty cool. So now we're going to throw batteries in him, and we'll get to the demo. All right. We got him back together. I had a little bit of a malfunction. The seller had left uh, some slightly old batteries in there. They hadn't, like, fully corroded the battery box, but there was a little bit in there, and that's why the, my batteries weren't making contact. And I was worried this thing was messed up, but no, it was just batteries, so... Cleaned up the corrosion a little bit, put some new batteries in there, and you'll see if, uh, well, that's, oh, no, it did work. All right, so that's his activation. He has one activation, and that's it. Um, you can hear uh, you can hear a bunch of classic Jemmy audio just kind of haphazardly slapped on top of each other and all together. Um, but I actually like the way it sounds. I think it sounds pretty cool. It's just a shame. For one, it was only ever used on one life size. You're looking at it. And it was used on the inflatable Tower of Terror, I think it's called, or Tower of Doom. Or it's, it's the inflatable, uh, like, stone castle look inspire with the heads, the masks that spin around in it or was it the tower of torture i i don't remember i don't really care but um that was the only other place i believe this exact audio track was used 
Um, it just kind of sucks because this guy has such a cool look going, but my God, is he flimsy? My God, is he cheap? Um, it doesn't say it on the box, but I want to know what the original retail was for this thing. Cause it must've been like 50 or $60. There's no way they were charging more than that for this thing. Uh, it's a shame, uh, because it, it would be a very cool item, but I'm assuming, um, you know, it was made cheap. Either Jemmy was experimenting with how cheap they could go. Or it could have been Menard specifically asked for this item to be on the cheaper end because maybe they were selling other more high-end Jemmy stuff and they wanted something the everyday person. Because, you know, the everyday person back then, you know, 60 bucks back then was probably about 100 today. Um, you know, and your average person didn't want to go into the store and spend $150 or more on Dr. Shivers. They, they wanted to just walk in there maybe and grab something cheap and put up on their uh, front porch or to put in their Halloween party and... That's what this item was supposed to be, and uh, it's very, very clear. I will say this, uh, even as cheap as newer props are, uh, they are built to a slightly higher standard than this. I would almost say that some of the modern Sunstar, you know, life sizes are uh, are built better than this. I mean, I'll take that Christmas tree stand over uh, this, uh, this build, because this build is very, very, very weak. It's just the plastic that they used. It's very um, stiff. It doesn't have any flex to it. And because of that, it won't flex. It will just snap if it's stressed. Uh, and that just sucks. Uh, it's very, very brittle. So this guy will probably most likely be getting a conversion over to a different uh, standing mechanism, a different standing setup uh, for use in my display next year because there ain't no way in heck I'm putting this thing outside like this because in a, one gust of wind and this thing is snapping into a million of pieces. And you might say, well, it's a collection, it's a collector's item. You know, uh, you, you got to keep it indoors, keep it in climate control at all times. It cannot be outside. Look, I buy these things because I plan to use them in a display. I do buy maybe a few items here and there for actual collecting purposes, but for the most part, I buy stuff to use stuff. Uh, so this thing will be in a display. And on top of that, there's no latex parts to really, there's nothing to worry about rotting out. It's just that cheap plastic. So I'll see what I can do about uh, giving him some extra strength so he can uh, handle the wind. I might reuse the original poles so he stays at this height because I think it's pretty intimidating. It's pretty cool. The other thing that sucks is the audio is very, very quiet. But uh, with how cheap everything else is, I'm kind of surprised you can hear the audio at all. Like, uh, surprised it doesn't have like a like a speaker that big in there or something. You know, it's it's got like a regular decent okay size speaker, like a tabletop speaker in there. Um, but all in all, would I recommend this guy? Uh, I don't know. Do I do this in my reviews? I haven't watched any of my old ones. Would I recommend this guy if you can get him for a hundred and thirty dollars or cheaper? Yes. If you if somebody's offering. Uh, you know, more money, like if they're uh, asking more money than that. No, I'm sorry. I know it's rare. I know he's hard to find. The reason why is because of how cheap he is. I'm sure people just tossed him in the landfill the second the plastic snapped. But um, would I recommend this guy for anything more than 130? I'm sorry, but no, as cool as the face and costume is, the build quality is just not worth it. And unless you have parts laying around that you can build a whole new mechanism, whole new standing whatever you want to call it, uh, you know, it's not a mechanism because it doesn't really move, but if you want to build a whole new internal structure, there we go. If you, his structure is bad. If you want to, if you have the parts to build a new structure, then I'd say go for it, I guess. I mean, I, I wouldn't spend stupid money on this thing. Um, but, uh, is it worth 130? I guess so. I mean, you can't really find them. And like I said, he's got a cool look. And like I said, also, I have the parts to, uh, give this guy a, a much, much, much needed strengthening in the structure so that he can actually be put outside in a display and uh, not have to worry about the wind ripping him down. But um, yeah, I, I, uh, I don't, you know, I don't have a script for these, so I don't really know how to end them. So I'll just activate them one more time and that'll be it. Well, uh, I guess that's it then. Uh, so this is a Morbid Mansion here on Jemmy Master Animatronics calling it quits for another day. And I will see you in the next video, which will involve a very nicely dressed skeleton standing in the background.
this guy needs repairs and we're going to do it all on camera. So, and by we, I mean me and probably the voices in my head as well. That's what I mean by we. So stick around. We're going to get back. We're going to get to this guy right here, fully restore him. And we'll put that in the next video. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this uh, uh, review, per possibly, perhaps, on this, uh, I believe, it, I don't even know the year on this thing right now off the top of my head. I believe this was 2008 or 2007. Jemmy, Screaming Zombie or Ghastly Zombie. I believe Ghastly Zombie is the one that a lot of people call him because of the face. And that's what I'm going to call him too, because I love the Ghastly series of characters. And I, I wish this sculpt would make a return to Jemmy. Uh, it's very cool. That 2017 zombie we got was very similar with the uh, screaming face, but just not quite the same. Maybe someday we'll see it come back. But anyway, this is a Morbid Mansion on Jemmy Master Animatronics. I'm signing out for the day.